so we're all feeling it. Prices are up for everything from gas to groceries, um, but one of the things that I am most passionate about is eating nutrient dense, the healthiest food possible, yet doing it in a way that is super budget friendly, cost effective, and really saving you money at the grocery store. And I think that it is totally possible to eat in a way that is healthy, nutritious, supports local food, and also does it in a way that's friendly to your budget and not making you feel like you are spending an arm and a leg for everything. So I'm gonna talk all about what we do and tips and tricks that we've learned along the way to keep our budget low, but our food value high. So our food journey has been a little bit of a, it's been a journey, I guess. And so when we started out, um, when we were newly married, I was actually a super big like couponer, like the people that you'd see on the TV shows that could buy a whole grocery cart full of food items and come home and they'd be like $2.72 or something. Like that was me. I was really good at that. I was able to, with coupons and these different, you know, money saving mom things, like really coupon my way out of getting a lot, a lot of food for not a lot of dollars. I was really good at it. But then we changed to eating um, not processed food and really eating all real food. However, I took a lot of the things that I learned from kind of mastering the art of budgeting and shopping on a dime and translated that over into eating real food. No, I no longer use coupons or anything like that, but I am able to really stretch my food dollars super, super far and get a lot of bang for my buck when it comes to buying whole, healthy, organic, nutrient-dense foods. So a few of the, the tips and tricks I have. So I guess coming, you're like, okay, well, you're a farmer, you grow all your own food, that's great for you, but I can't do that. And, and I get it, but we've really only started growing the majority of our food like the last year, maybe two. But beyond that, yeah, we were purchasing the majority of our food. And even when we were purchasing the majority of our food, we were buying the highest quality food possible and really only spending, I think our food budget at the time was maybe around $300 for a small family. We are purchasing really, really high quality food. And so how are we able to do that? Well, to start off, um, just to, I guess, break down what we do is the majority of the food that we buy is from farms, but it's not, well, I do love to go to a farmer's market. I think like many, I get sticker shock going from to most farmer's markets and asking what a pound of something is. And I'm like, oh my goodness, that's that's a lot of dollars. So that's not usually the route that I go. While I do love farmer's markets and fully support them and know that they are super important for farmers to make good value for their money, I, I like to go at it from a little bit of a different approach. And so I think of it more as kind of like how would people prior to grocery stores, even if you're not growing your own food, how would people prior to grocery stores might they have eaten and kind of emulating that sort of lifestyle um, when I think about shopping. So for instance, um, it's June now and we are just approaching strawberry season. And so when strawberry season hits, our family will go out to the local you pick strawberry farm and we will buy several flats of strawberries when they're at their peak nutrition, when they're at their best price because they're fresh, they're in season, they're local, they're like as good as it gets. And we are we will stock up on a few flats of strawberries and I will slice them and I will freeze them. I'll cut off the tops and I will freeze them and that will be our strawberries that we will have for the entire year. So I will not buy strawberries from the grocery store or anywhere else for the rest of the year, but we will be eating strawberries all year long that we got from maybe one or two trips from our local berry farm this June. So I apply that approach to a lot of the foods that we buy. So another example would be something like um, winter squashes or potatoes. And so these are awesome because they store super, super well. And so now we are able to grow the winter squashes and the potatoes that we need to store all year round. But prior to when we were able to grow these foods, we bought them and so when um, when it's fall and farms are overflowing in butternut squashes and they just need them gone and they have no place to store them and they just need to, to get rid of them, they're often selling them for like a dollar a piece or really, really inexpensive. So you can stack up, like don't just buy two or three that you need for you know the next couple of weeks, buy like 30 or 40 or 50 or what you need for 
the rest of, you know, to get you through till the summertime. That's what we do. And our winter squashes have stored awesome. And so instead of thinking it of it as like a, what do I need this week? We think of it kind of more from a long-term perspective of like, what are we going to eat this year? And when is that food in season? And how can I stack up on it? Now, I realize that that might not be applicable to like every single food item out there. So what about things like, I don't know, maybe spices or random like oats or I, I don't know, some other foods like that. And so yes, we do buy those foods maybe at a grocery store or somewhere else a lot. As much as we possibly can, I like to source things locally, even for things like wheat. Like we have a local mill that we're able to buy, but instead of buying the ground flour, we buy wheat berries that we then grind ourselves. So that way I can stock up, I can buy a whole bunch at one time that we have. So we have a year's supply or more of wheat berries, of rye berries, of einkorn berries that we need for the whole year. Buying in bulk is obviously another way that you can save money on your groceries. What about going to the grocery store? What I like to do when I go to the grocery store is instead of having a like a dedicated list and a meal plan, is I like to have what I call more of a rough list and a rough meal plan where I kind of have some things in mind. You know, maybe we'll make some soups and casserole, but it's all flexible and I shop based on what's on sale or the best prices versus what I want. And so instead of, like there's just a bunch of categories of food. So maybe you'll have sweet potatoes on your list, but maybe sweet potatoes are really, really expensive that week. If that's the case, I, I won't buy sweet potatoes. Instead, maybe carrots would be a good substitute and you can buy carrots at a way better price per pound than you could buy sweet potatoes. And so most recipes you can substitute carrots for sweet potatoes pretty easily. Things like that are what I like to do um, when I'm grocery shopping to really get the best bang for my buck. It's just always being flexible. Um, I think another thing is being really conscious about what you like and what you eat and not wasting food. And so it, it drives me crazy when I'm like, um, I'm gonna call out my sister here. I'm, I'm like at their house watching their kids and um, you know, they have a bag of apples with like shriveled apples on their counter. And that just makes me really, really sad because I just hate to see good food go to waste. And so the thing I do while I'm watching those kids is we turn those shriveled up apples into apple crisp and we put them to use and we find a use for those apples because that is another big area that we can save money is if we're not wasting food, if we're using what we're buying and then buying what we're going to use. And so I think a lot of times when we shop, maybe our eyes are bigger than our stomach or we don't just don't have a good sense of what our family actually needs or will actually use. Yeah, I think it's important to really dial in what your needs are, what your family really likes, and then shop accordingly. And so if there's a food that you find week after week after week is just sitting on the shelf and no one is touching it, then stop buying it. Or if there's another thing that's like you, your family really loves, like stock up on that thing, buy a bunch of it. But whatever you buy, use, and whatever you're gonna use, buy that item. I think it's really, really easy when things are on sale to stock up and buy a ton of it, but then it ends up sitting on your shelf and you don't use it. So even if something's cheap, it's not helpful to buy it if you're not going to use it. Another thing when it comes to purchasing food from the store is trying to avoid convenience foods. Well, convenience foods are convenient and having something that is easily grab and goable is super nice at times. Those foods are often just really, really, really expensive. And so even just changing little things, like instead of buying individual yogurt cups, buy the like quart size bulk container and then put it in your own. You know, if you're gonna send it with a kid in their lunchbox or whatever, just put it in a little um, glass container or you know whatever sort of little container that you have that you can put that in. But it's, you know, that takes an extra 30 seconds to scoop yogurt out and put it in a container. But those little things can really save money. And there are so many examples of that. Even think of thinking of like cheese, like instead of buying string cheese or sliced cheese, buy the block of cheese. Those things are often just a way, way better bang for your buck than buying the prepackaged pre-cut, pre-sliced, pre-prepared item. And so what I have often like to think about when I am grocery shopping or thinking about our food or eating seasonally is how would people have shopped or what? how would they have eaten many years ago and what's the 
what's the closest I can get to that source of the food? When I think about how, for instance, cheese comes, like cheese doesn't come pre-sliced, ready to go. Like cheese comes out in a block um, or a wheel. And so I wanna buy my cheese as close to that wheel as I can, as opposed to the more processed product down the line. And by doing so, you're gonna get a more healthful product and you're also gonna save money and get a product that's better for your budget. And so that's another thing that I feel like we have learned in doing this, by choosing to actually incorporate more nutrient-dense foods and focus on nutrient-dense foods, it's actually pretty much instantly correlated with a savings in our budget. Like, I can't even remember the last time that I bought broke down pieces of chicken, you know, like a chicken breast or chicken thighs or anything. Like, we only now consume whole chicken because chickens, that's, that's just how they come. And they're way better, usually priced per pound to get the whole chicken. And then you have so many parts of that chicken that you can use. So actually like right now, our weekly routine is to cook a whole chicken. Usually at the beginning of the week, I'll put a whole chicken in our slow cooker. I'll fill it like half full with water and I'll slow cook it overnight. And then the next day, maybe we'll eat it for lunch. We'll eat it for a meal. And then I'll just shred the rest of the chicken off the bone, put it in a container, take the liquid that was in there, all the broth, and have um, chicken broth. And now all of a sudden from that one chicken, we're gonna have several meals from um, the shredded chicken that I have, from the broth that I have, and so, so, so many good nutrients from that whole chicken. And when you think about just buying chicken breast or something, it's like maybe that's gonna get you one meal, no broth, and you lose so, so much of that good, nutrition, the protein, the gelatin that you get in that whole chicken with the skin and the fat and all of that good stuff that when you get a boneless skinless chicken breast, you really are losing so much nutrition. It's more expensive and it doesn't even taste as good, as, I don't think. Those sorts of things. So what I love to do is get to know your farmer. Start looking on Facebook groups, word of mouth, ask your friends and family, ask people you know who are into local eating and find a local farmer and talk with them because I've often found in our journey of doing this, most people are looking for like the boneless skinless chicken breasts and so those are the things or you know like the prepackaged brats or ground beef or steaks like these really kind of more glamorous and convenient cuts that, that really we're used to nowadays but if you're willing to go out there a little bit more on the edge and ask for some of the more non-traditional, non-modern day cuts, things like um, like pork hocks or soup bones, like beef soup bones, or the organ meats, or all of these things, a lot of times farmers are literally just looking to get rid of these because they're sitting there in their freezers and people aren't buying them. They just need to move them. And so they're often really willing to sell those sorts of kind of odd bits of meat for a way, way, way less price. But yeah, if you can get used to it, these pieces of meat are one, way better for you. They provide a way better nutrient profile. They're so much better for you. And they're so much cheaper. And you can find them for very little. And they taste so good. Throw that stuff in a stew or a soup or add it with some other stuff. And it's Amazing. These foods are now these foods are my favorite. Like th this is what our family asks for are kind of more of these odd cuts of meat as opposed to your normal ones. They taste better, they're better for you. Our bodies crave them. Or another thing we like to do is we like to add organ meats in with our ground beef if we're making something like burgers or meatloaf. Um, and it's a great way to add this really cost-effective, nutrient-dense meat in with your you know, your regular ground beef to stretch that so much further. So now all of a sudden, instead of having, you know, maybe two pounds of ham worth of hamburgers, you can have four pounds worth of hamburgers that you paid a super low price for that organ meat that you ground in there. And they're gonna be nutrient dense, they're gonna feed your family for longer, and you're hardly gonna have spent any more money to do it. Those are the sort of things that we have been doing for years to save so much money on our grocery bill. And so I think like I mentioned before, even prior, so I would say right now our grocery bill, what we spend on groceries maybe averages around 
100 to 200 dollars a month and so we are growing most of our own food we have a family milk cow we are raising our own meat um, with we've gotten a cow processed and we've um, raised our own chickens for meat we have eggs we have milk cups, we have all the dairy we need. We grow a lot of storage crops, freeze a lot of the food, and can a lot of the food that we have. So that makes up the majority of our diet. But there are some things that we do buy from other local farms if we don't grow them ourselves or from the grocery store. So I do go to the grocery store. Even before we were growing most of our own food, I would try to limit my stops at the grocery store to really only once every at least once every other week, if not once every three weeks or even once every month. And I found that by kind of stretching out those times um, between grocery vis visits, it really forced me to just eat what we had. I think oftentimes we stop at the grocery store because it's convenient and there's a specific thing that you want. But if you really dig into what you have in your pantry, what you have in your refrigerator, you can often make several more days worth of meals from what you already have and push off that grocery visit of restocking on new things because as soon as you restock on new things, those are the things that you're gonna wanna eat and then the things that you already had in there are just gonna continue to sit in there and go bad if they're not eaten. But when you have fresh things, that's what you're gonna choose. So I, I like to push back those grocery visits as long as possible eat everything out of what we currently have before I go to the grocery store and buy new things. And I found doing that really helps minimize your grocery trips for one. And then when you do go to the grocery store, you have a kind of a, a rough list of some, a general, you know, I need, you know, these grains and this baking item and these fruits and vegetables. And then you just shop based on what you can find for the best price, for the best quality, um, as opposed to needing to have this specific thing and this specific thing and this specific thing and this specific thing. And so for us, um, my favorite grocery store is currently, um, we're in the Midwest, I love Woodman's, um, but they're not a national or even regional chain, I don't believe. So, but if, if I didn't go to Woodman's, I like to find the little like local European or ethnic sort of grocery stores. Those are my favorite. I, I find that the prices are good, Produce selection is usually excellent. There's usually a good deli and, you know, shop the perimeters. And I feel like those are the areas that those sort of ethnic grocery stores really shine versus I feel like most of the kind of modern American chains really, they have a lot of the packed middle aisles of the packaged convenient food stuff. But if you're trying to avoid those aisles and really stick to the perimeter aisles, I find that my favorite grocery stores tend to be the non-chain, just small ethnic sort of foods that really just go out of their way to source um, a wide range of different fruits and vegetables and other fresh foods that I find that you can't get at kind of more of the chain sort of stores. We also do have a Costco membership that we are given as a gift. And so there are a handful of things that I'd like to get at Costco. Um, oats and some other baking stuff, coconut oil, organic cane sugar, um, some stuff like that I mainly get at Costco, but really I probably only go there once every couple of months and then stock up on those five or six items that I like to get at Costco. So if we were buying our own Costco membership, I'm not sure that it would be worth it for us, but because we have been given it as a gift, I do like to go to Costco occasionally. And so you kind of have to weigh out that one for yourself and what your family needs into whether or not that's gonna be worth it for you. But I do like having it. I think another big thing to save money on groceries is really, and even just in general, right? So cooking food from scratch, it requires a lot of time. And so cooking food from scratch will save you a lot of money on your grocery bill instead of buying prepackaged, pre-prepared food. However, it does require a significant amount of your time. And so I found that just really trying to keep meals simple is the best way to do this without making yourself crazy, but being able to eat really cost-effectively, really healthily and nutrient-dense, but also not feel like you're spending all your time in the kitchen. And so really with all of the meals that I prepare for my family, all I try to do is focus on having a solid protein and a solid carbohydrate, and that's it. Usually if you have a solid protein, and especially if it's an animal-based protein, your fat's gonna come along with that, right? Like if I'm cooking a whole chicken or ground beef or some sort of pork, like there's going to be fat in with that protein, and so I, that's kind of just a given. But high quality, solid um, source of protein, 
and a um, good source of carbohydrate, whether that comes from you know, a root vegetable, a fruit, some sort of rice or a properly prepared grain, but just that and that and that's it. That could look like scrambled eggs and a fruit smoothie. That could look like steak and potatoes. That could look like a lot of different things, but really at the end of the day, it can be pretty simple. Meals don't have to be, yeah, just really complex with 10 different side dishes and two different meat options and whatever. Vary it up over time, and especially as the seasons come, you will vary it. Now that it's summer, we're eating fresh from the garden. We're eating a lot of things like berries. We're eating fresh lettuce, fresh greens, alongside our protein and more like smoothies and things like that like that's what our body's craving and that's what we want and then when we get into the winter it's more stews and soups and potatoes and squashes um, and those are the things that we have available to us and so just by thinking in terms of what can I find locally what how can I eat seasonally how can I make this maybe from scratch as, a, as opposed to buying it pre-packaged just by implementing those little tips you will automatically, oh, and then not wasting food, um, eating what you have, stretching it as far as you can and not wasting it. Just by doing those things, I think you will be shocked at how much you can actually save on your grocery bill. So I don't feel like anything that we do is, is crazy. We just, I'm just kind of a stickler for, for following these principles from cooking from scratch, not letting food go to waste, and then trying to source the best things possible. So like I said, Farmers markets often give me sticker shock at the price, but if you if you ask around to farmers and actually just be a little more strategic in how you do that shopping, you can actually find that you can often buy a lot, get a lot more bang for your buck. And so if you show up at a farmer's market at the end of the day, farmers are often looking to just get rid of a bunch of stuff. Um, in August, they're looking to hand off tons of tomatoes because they are overloaded in tomatoes and they do not want to bring more tomatoes home. And so they will often happily give you a bag full of tomatoes because they do not want them. Um, or we were just given a bunch of radishes from a local farmer at our farmer's market because it was the end of the day and she just wanted to go home and she did not want to take those radishes with her. And so um, just those things by connecting with farmers, by finding out Maybe what are the less popular items that they have? What are they willing to sell to you in bulk? Buying, you know, bulk meat is another really, really awesome way to save money. Um, and so buying a quarter beef or a half a pig, um, it's these little things as opposed to buying kind of the package of this. Um, while it seems like an investment initially and more of an upfront cost, you will save so much over time in that and have just way more nutrient dense food options for your family. Yeah, so I'd love to hear from you. What what tips and tricks have you found helpful when you're trying to buy healthy, organic, local food? If you're interested in more kind of budget saving tips, how to, I don't know, not go crazy during this inflation, we have another video on um, just our family breaking down our budget and how we actually have been able to live off of only around $30,000 every year for the whole year. So we just break down exactly what those dollars are being spent on. And so if you're interested in learning more about budgeting and saving money, um, we'll link over to that video and we'll see you in that one next.